Hi, I'm Joe from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, and I'm <laughs> very honored to have with me this morning Gerald Bromer, who has been through the years a very, very special friend. He and his wife, Georgia, have been much more than um, an artist teacher to me or any, just a friend, a great friend. And so, Gerald, That's we're right. so glad and honored to have you here. Yeah, well, it's, it's an honor to be here. I, every time I get invited to come back, it's just it's, I look forward to it for two years or something like that, you know. So and we uh, look forward to having you for yeah. that time. We really do. We, yeah. we miss you when you're not here. Um, you've been painting for a long time. How many years have you painted, oh, Gerald? That's a hard thing to do. I, I started in the 60s, I guess. So that would be about 55, no, yeah, about 55 years, something yeah. like that. Georgia gave me one time for Christmas, she gave me a set of oil paints, you know, for Christmas. I can still remember I painted a white horse, you know, in a blue background or something like that. That was the beginning of my art, my art career, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I taught art in school when I taught even in elementary school. Uh, but I didn't really do anything on my own. But after I got that, that uh, little set of oil paints, I started to paint a little bit, you know. So I, I guess we all need a kick and a slice, mm -hmm. you know, every once in a while to get us, move us in a different direction. And right. that's, uh, that's fine. And, and I finally, I, I really took a class with, with a teacher at Otis Art Institute in Los Angeles. His name was Noel Quinn, and he was a watercolor teacher. And you were telling the story this morning about uh, the cost of stuff. Well, yep. that's what I did too. I went to the bookstore and I said, well, I need four sheets of Archer's paper and a couple of these brushes and, and Windsor Newton paints and stuff. And the thing was over $150. Well, a lot of I'd money back then. If I'd have gone home and told my wife I spent $150 on art supplies, I wouldn't have a wife anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be as simple as that. That's That was terrible. So I. After he, after he gave me the bill, I said, well, I can't get all this stuff. So I, I took one piece of paper and I did, you know, thinned it all down to where it was, you know, 75 bucks or something, which was still a lot of money. So we go to Noel Quinn the next day. There were five guys in that class. It was a night class. And I, we go in there and, we, and everybody complained about the cost of what it was. He says, cut the paper in half and paint on both sides and quit complaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good advice, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, and it, which is what I did. I still got those papers on, right. on both sides. I painted on both sides. Well, that was going to be one of my questions. Do you still have the white horse? No, I don't no. know. Well, I must have it. It's <laughs> around someplace, but probably in the garage or something like that. It's, so so it's when not, you took the watercolor class, mm -hmm. was that the beginning kind of, of watercolor yep. for you? Yeah. In college, you went to a teacher's college, I think, as yeah. I remember. Yeah. But in those days, art wasn't really, I mean, I started teaching in the, you know, way back in the f 40s, you know, and I, and I, an artist wasn't a thing that anybody did. Yeah. You know, you couldn't make any money doing that or anything. And I can remember when I went to that college, I, the, the dean that I talked to, my, to, to push me on my goal, you know, to go, he says, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be an artist and an art teacher. And he looked at me and he says, you don't want to do that. That was my counselor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, was this the teacher's college? Yeah. They said you didn't want to do that? Yeah, well, and you couldn't make a living at that in those no. days, you know, so I, But you did become a teacher, didn't you? Yes, I did. And taught art? And, yeah, I taught everything for a while, and, and, and I taught elementary school for five years, and then I, then, and it was in the Lutheran uh, system, and then I went, they started the new high school, and so they, they wanted me to, I was, and I had my degree, was in geography. Oh, because I didn't know that. I didn't, I'll tell you how that started. This okay. is a really good story. But, but the, when this counselor says, you don't want to be an artist, that's awful. I thought, now what am I going to do? What do I want to do? And I enrolled, I was a basketball player, so I enrolled in this geography class, and the teacher was a, was a, had been the basketball coach, and half the basketball team was in that class. So the te the, this guy, this, who was a teacher, He's standing up in the front of the room with the globe in his hand, like a basketball. And when the bell rang, he went, shot it to the guy in the front row, and he looked around, and he says, pass that thing around. And boy, we shot that. I think that's what I'm gonna be, a geographer. This is wonderful. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, talk about motivation. Boy, that was just, 
you know, I was hooked. This is this geography stuff's really neat. Yeah. And so I really did. I, I went, did my undergraduate work there, and then I went to Nebraska and to UCLA and got my, my master's degree in geography. So I really, and when it comes right down to that's what I paint. See, I paint geography a lot. Oh, you do, that's because right. Because the geography yeah. background is really strong as far as my, yeah, I paint a lot of geography stuff. Yes, you do, and they're wonderful. Yeah. So uh, then after your, really a career in teaching, almost, because it was several years. Oh, 25 years. That yeah. you taught, before you broke away and entered into the workshop circuit. Mm-hmm. And, and that would have been in the 60s also that you began to do that. And that was a tough thing too, because I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to paint, that's all I wanted to do. The last year that I taught school, I, took, I, I went on a half, half scale. I just taught a half a day, and I went home at noon to paint, you know. And, and, I, and I was actually, after the war was over, I don't know if you remember, but after the war was over, People were building their houses and stuff, and they needed paintings. Mm -hmm. And you know, and there I was, yeah, making paintings. You know, so and it, selling them as fast as you could make them. Absolutely right. I I could not hardly paint fast enough. It was really a, it was unbelievable, and and uh, so it was it, that was it was very propitious at that time. As far as the art is concerned, that that just was a natural thing. I did so. I didn't when I quit teaching. Fine, I taught, I I taught a half half salary, half scale or half uh, load one year, and then I took off for a year and I, and I told the principal, I said, if I need to come back, I, can I come back? And they said, oh yeah, you sh sure can. And I, and I told my wife, I said, after about 10 minutes of not having to go to school in, in September and just staying out in the studio and painting, I don't go back to school <laughs> again. This is too nice, you know? And so, I, and so paintings were selling great like crazy. I really, literally, for a couple of years, couldn't paint fast enough. And then Thurman Hewitt did all the workshops for, he was the big workshop guy in the United States. He started the workshop thing in, in going to Mexico and Europe and stuff like that. He was the first one that did that. And and he kept calling up and asking, you know, you know, we were going to Mexico, would you like to go to Oaxaca and paint? And so I said, no, I just don't have time. You know, I can't take two weeks off to do that. And so, I, I, I didn't do that for a long, long time. Two years, about two and a half years or something like that. I just kept saying no. And then, this is really kind of a neat story, but I was driving down the freeway one day and they were interviewing Steve Garvey on the radio, on the car radio. And, you know, he played first base for the Dodgers. And he had done it for a long time already. And, and, and I remember they, they uh, asked him a question about why he still goes out to schools and, and talks to kids. You know, he didn't really have to do that. He had a big reputation and everything. And, uh, and, and, and I was just listening, I was driving down the freeway, and Steve Garvey, I can remember every single word he said. He said, baseball has been so good to me, I'm impelled to put something back into the pot. And I, just, about, I just about drove off the freeway. I was, like he was talking to right you. here to my yeah. Mind. yeah. And so, the next people that called for a workshop were from San Antonio, Texas. And I says, okay, I'll give it a try and see. I go down there here, I got 40 people sitting in this class and I start talking and all, four, all 80 eyes were glued on me when I was talking. I thought high school teaching was never like this. <laughs> <laughs> in two minutes, I was hooked. Yeah. This is really nice. Right. And, uh, and the people responded, they worked hard and everything like that. So I, I was hooked as far as the, as the teaching the was concerned. And, and the teaching, I, it was, I was just blessed because I had been a teacher all my life. My dad was a teacher and I had gone to teacher's college and I taught and everything. So the teaching part came easy. It was a natural. To other people who are artists, that's a hard thing to do. And some of them don't do it very well still, you know, but, uh, but it always, the teaching part was always the easiest thing to, for me to do, so. So that's how it all started. And, that, and then Joe calls up. Uh. <laughs> I, I taught a long time before you called me. And you, you were in workshops a long time. And, yeah. And before I got hooked. And I was going to Myrtle Beach and all that stuff. Yep. Well, and I practically did that with, from the beginning when they started that up there. You did. 
with that was in the early 80s. With Steve McRae, yeah. Yeah, Steve McRae. Well, you made a comment that uh, you wanted to give back. I don't know of anyone who's given more to art and watercolor, uh, not just watercolor, but uh, art in itself, the design and technique and ability and encouragement than Gerald Bromer. And I know you're humble and you're not going to say, but see, I, I can see you from outside the forest and you're in the forest and you have, you have given so much to this. Uh, every artist in the world is indebted to you. Well, I don't know about that. Well, it's it, true. You've written, how many books have you written? Oh, my, 27, 20, 27, 27 books. Yeah, a lot of them were for, for schools, you know. I mean, I did the first ones for, for schools. Classroom books. Classroom books. And some of them were for teachers, and some of them were for, for, uh, for the students. And so, I, and that's what I did at the beginning. I worked with Davis Publications up in Massachusetts, and, and uh, see, that's another whole world when I started doing that. I mean, they, they wanted somebody to come and, and teach, and I, was, I had written articles for their school arts magazine and stuff like that when I was teaching in high school. And, and uh, so then George Horn, who was from Baltimore, was, a, was the art superintendent for Baltimore schools, was going to do a book. And, and so he, they contacted me, and I went back, and we sat down, and we kind of divvied up what we wanted to, each one of us wanted to do. And then we went, went back home, and we came back to, to Worcester, to Massachusetts, to Davis Publications again the next year or so, and we had enough stuff for two books, you know. So we did, we put one out for seventh grade and one for eighth grade. We kind of divvied up the, the stuff, and that's how it all started. And of course, they were the first books ever done for schools and, and really in, in the, at that time. And so the, they just sold like crazy, you know. And, and uh, so pretty soon then I did a book on printmaking and I did, you know, I did all kinds of books on watercolor and sculpture and all kind of stuff. And uh, for, but for schools really, for teachers. And so it, it was phenomenous like you and you go, everybody knows who you are. And, 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 and when I, I would go to a, a convention, like I didn't go to many different parts of the country, but I go to the one in Los Angeles when they had the National Art Education Association convention. And as soon as somebody saw who I was and everything, I would get this big crowd of people. I'm around. sure. Everybody wanted to thank me for, I mean, I've had people come up and cry, you know, to meet because you. I published the book that they that they use in school yeah. that they didn't have before. And, wow, see? And it's, it's really, so I had that whole direction of doing that, and I wrote, so I wrote all those books all that time, and then I painted, and then I taught, and, and it's, uh, I mean, how rich can a life get, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I mean, it just really is amazing. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all love you, see, and that's the reason we gather around you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know how many classes I've set in with you, but several. Oh, well, lots and of them. And I, yeah. I, I still learn so much, and I have a long ways to go, but you're so gentle in your teaching. Yeah, but you really are. You're getting better too, Joe. <laughs> well, I should be getting a little better. I've been at it long <laughs> enough. Can we pop this out of here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because you really are. Uh, that's, it's, no, that's a, it's amazing. But we do grow, and and all those experiences help make us who we are eventually. And and uh, it's it's a, it's been an incredibly strong blessing as far as my life is concerned. Absolutely. And now, all the people you touch, you just think, you know, I get letters from people in Japan or something like yeah, that. Yeah, isn't that you know, great? And, you know, thank you for doing for doing something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've you've touched you've touched. Thousands. thousands of, you yeah. have. Oh, You've yeah. touched thousands and thousands of people. Yep. Do you recall the first time you came here to teach? I probably do. You can enlighten me a little bit if you want, but I don't. Yeah, I. Well, I don't know. I think it was kind of in the early nineties. Yeah, I maybe think so. ninety three, ninety four. And I, I tried to look back, and we have the old catalogs. I couldn't put my hand on them today. But I think it was certainly mid-90 or before that. And um, it was, I remember the class, you had, we take 25 maximum, and we had 25 every time for your class, you know. 
And then one time I took a class that you taught on drawing. And uh, I really, really enjoyed that. Your drawing skills are incredible. And watching you draw helps me think, yeah, I can do that. You know, well, then I go do it and I can't do it. But with a little practice, I can get better at what I'm doing. So you've, you've really, you've helped me a lot in my art. Yeah, the drawing is really, it, 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 it's really important. And I did that ever since I taught first grade. You know, yeah, I of course. Kids how to draw. So the drawing is really, it was easy for me to do. And, uh, and I, I can still remember that when people would come to a drawing class and they, I would get more men than women in the drawing classes. Oh, wow. I did, I did a couple of drawing things at, at Spring Maid. And, uh, and we went out and drew every day. I would get, you know, out of 25 people, I'd get 15 guys and 10 girls or something like that in the, cl in the classes there. And that's unusual. Yeah, and they don't, but they, they don't, don't come to painting classes, but they, the drawing thing is something that they want. And, yeah. And I did two of them up there, I think. And, at Spring Maid? Yeah. We went out and literally we drew, you know. On the beach. And, yeah. Yeah. The beach, we went down to Brook Green Gardens and. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we did. We had good places, you know, that, that we went. And, uh, boy, when we had shows, when, you know, at Spring Maid, they, ha they hang all the art up. Well, they couldn't hang the drawings up, you know. It was, everybody was working in their sketchbooks and stuff like that. So we, we had e each person reproduce several on the Xerox machine uh, out of their sketchbook. And then, you know, they, we put those up on the wall and then we opened the sketchbooks up underneath. All, we had about three tables full of sketchbooks and people could come and page through them. And it was phenomenal. They really did really good work, you know, and it was, it was a neat thing. With, but one of the big problems of doing that all outdoors and everything is, you know, the weather's not always the best in November or, or so. And, and uh, so we kind of quit that then after a while. But I really did enjoy the teaching. The nice thing about drawing, you don't have to lug equipment. You know, somebody would have a folding chair maybe and a and a sketchbook and a pen. That's all you need, you know. And you yeah. Sit down and draw. That's a, it's a, it's a, was really nice. Yeah. You, you through the years, because I've heard you talk in several classes, have met a lot of what now are deceased, very famous artists. Mm -hmm. I know even this morning in the workshop, you mentioned Diebenkorn. Mm -hmm. uh, can you name a few other famous people that you've known? Oh, and, and, and some of them aren't that famous, but Robert E. Wood was, was a good friend of mine. Yep. And he was one of the best watercolorists that ever lived. And, and, uh, and, and he also smoked a lot and died early, which was- Oh, uh, he did, smoked a lot. And we're gonna put a little commercial in here for don't smoke. For don't the, smoke. Smoke your life away. Yeah. But he really did. I mean, he got cancer and he just, and he died. He was the same age I was exactly. Wow. He should have been able to paint another 20 or 30 years. Sure. After he died 20 years ago. And he should have been able to paint another 20 years, which is a shame. Because he was, I'll tell you something about what, uh, Bob's paintings one time, we were during the National Watercolor Society show. And the guys were sitting in chairs. There were five jurors. They were sitting in chairs and they had paddles that were in and out. The one was green and one was red. And, and they were just bored to death looking at all these paintings. And you see the guys doing it. And, and Bob Wood's painting came up down on the, the, all five guys were out of their chairs and down on their knees looking at it. You know, I thought, nobody's ever gonna look at my paintings like that. But, but now but, they but, do. <laughs> but boy, that was, that was phenomenal, you know. And, and, and he, Bob was a technician. And, and an incredibly good teacher, and, uh, and, and, but, and he, but he smoked, and he just died too early. It yeah. Was, uh, it's just a shame. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't smoke. And Me too. Here. Well, wh what's in the future for Gerald Bromer? Oh, I... Uh, more workshops. I only got a few more years to go, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot more years, we hope. But and you'll, I, you'll, do, you'll continue to do workshops yeah, and paint. Actually... This is really funny, but I, and I told somebody, I said, maybe I told you that I was gonna quit doing workshops yeah. next year. And then people start calling up, you know, and, and I don't, I mean, I'm not even in the workshopper in your, in your advertising this year because I thought I was gonna stop. Yeah. And no, I've got five or six already. And, Lined up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and they're big ones too. I know. Different parts of the country and everything. And, 
that's, that's exciting. And, 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 and I, I do love to teach, and I, it's just getting there anymore is, is a hassle, you know. The, it is. Just to travel and everything. And, and, and you see, t when you teach, you get to do both of the things that you love so much. You get to paint mm -hmm. and teach, mm -hmm. two together. You when you're home, of course, you love to paint. But when you're away and teaching, you get them both at one time. You should see, I've got a show coming up in October. 200 paintings You told me, um, incredible. And it's a great thing you're doing too. It's a benevolent thing yeah, you're doing. Yeah. So. But it's just really it was, it was amazing that I was going along doing, I was doing like two paintings a day for a long time. Boy, I was really getting stuff done. And then I fell and broke my, my wrist. And I thought I would, how can I finish the show then? But I had it almost done, you know, and then, and I've been able now to, to do a little bit and stuff, so I, it's going to be done, and I got 200 done already. You so. have 199, because no. you know I bought one. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I will take one. To, I'd like to be the first person to buy one from for your benevolent I, cause I, here. I, I, I go home and I'll paint an extra one now, so I <laughs> make, make sure I got 200 in the show. I don't know how many's going to anybody's going to count them, you know, to to see, but we'll. It's a big space. It, it's a huge space, and they and they're just having a little trouble getting the, the organizations take it over, and they have workshops and stuff like that there, which is what it's good for. And it's a neat thing, and uh, you know, you bet. And, and it'll and they should do okay, and they should. Well, you know, there you go, giving back again. Yeah, but that's what life's all about. It is. It, it, it's uh, what we give out, we get back. Yeah, true. It doesn't stop, and it's. Uh, but it's wonderful to be able to help. You bet. You know, and, and I think, you know, just like you providing space like that here, and me doing the teaching here and providing that, I look at those people in there. The other day, I, I was just looking. None of them from, are from around here. Oh no. They're from all over the place, and they come to this place, which is really in the boonies out here. Yeah, we are in the boonies. <laughs> and it's not near anything. You no. Know? And. and Yet they're all here. Yeah, you know, and and uh, having a good time. Yeah, they love it. Yeah. Well, Gerald Bromer, I love you and your wife and uh, my wife, and I think the world of you people. We do have a good time. We do have a good time, <laughs> and I can't wait till you come back. And thank you for being here. Oh, that's an invitation, huh? That's, that's absolutely. Uh, Next year. Mm, Edwina's already working on it. She's going to okay. come to you in a few minutes. And, okay. <laughs> You've, you've done a phenomenal job here with this, with the whole business. When you, you told your story this morning, I mean, I've told that story to people. You know, I could almost have it memorized yeah. almost, you know, and, and, and nobody really believes it. You know, that, that, you know, how can that happen? You know, it's just it's almost impossible. Well, we've been fortunate, but this, this is about you today. Thank you so much. We, and thank you so much.